Hi friends, on today's video, we are going to be unboxing and assembling this Proform Sport CX stationary exercise bike. We picked it up from Sam's Club for just under 400 bucks. Let's go ahead and get into it. So right out of the box, here are the pieces that we are looking at. This is obviously the main unit. You can see the flywheel and the main body of the exercise bike. That all came out in one piece. There were a couple, actually three, cardboard boxes. I'm guessing these are the base legs as well as another small brown box. There was some parts in it. Do not throw these away when you're removing the uh, parts from the main box. We've got the seat post. We have the main unit bar that comes up that allows you to use a screen. We have the main handlebars and we have some plastic baggies here with another few little plastic pieces and the instruction manuals. All right, in the biggest blue bag, that's what you wanna open first. Here's what you're gonna find, a couple of iFit coach instructional little pamphlets. You're gonna find the hardware kit that's all sealed up. You're gonna find a one-year iFit coach membership. That's pretty cool. It's actually like a $279 value that comes with this bike, the one that we did purchase from Sam's Club. And you also have the instruction manual here. We uh, obviously are not gonna need this if you're gonna be following along with the video, but keep this handy in case you need to go back and reference it. We also have a little uh, wrench that comes with. This is actually the only tool besides the Allen wrenches right there that we should need to put this together. Okay, so our first task is to place the base stabilizers in place. It's just going to give us a more solid platform. You're going to find those in one of these long brown boxes that you saved. Here's what they look like out of the box. We've got the front stabilizer with the wheels. The wheels are going to go this direction to the front of the bike, as well as the back stabilizer. And again, it doesn't really matter which way you mount it. It can go either way. You're also going to need these four bolts that are in our packet. And you're looking for part number 69. And uh, again, they're gonna be the larger of the bolts. So I'm gonna pull these out. I'm also gonna pull the correct Allen key out here so we can install the stabilizers. Okay, so once you have your front stabilizer, your bolts and your Allen key, what we're gonna actually do is place this underneath uh, the front of our bike. We're gonna make sure it's in the correct position, meaning the wheels are forward. And then the stoppers, these are the little guys in the bottom that keep the bike in place. Make sure those are on the bottom. Okay, once we have it in place, you can kind of put it underneath the front of the bike. I'm going to line these holes that are on top of this bracket with the holes that are on the stabilizer. It's going to lift up and push this down and line those up. Again, you may need some help if you have a partner to kind of help lift this up for you while you slide under. That is, uh, could, be, could be good. And then be careful your fingers when you're placing this down. This piece is pretty heavy because it's got this heavy flywheel. Once the bracket is in place, we can actually just hand tighten a couple of these bolts down into place. I'm going to do that exact same thing on the other side of the bike here, mirrored on the other hole. And then we're going to take our Allen key and we're actually going to make sure those are nice and tight. So this might take just a little bit of time. I'll go ahead and fast forward the video and we'll get to the next step. Okay, here's our front stabilizer in place. You can see the two bolts have been tightened down so they're nice and flush against that bracket. Okay, the next piece is to put on the back bracket. Again, same thing, just make sure your stoppers are on the bottom of the bracket when you're putting it on. This way it doesn't really matter, you can have it either way. Just make sure those holes are lined up. We're gonna put it down next to the bracket. I'm gonna lift up on the back of the bike and I'm gonna put those brackets right over the holes. And again, put the bolts in just like we did on the front. Okay, here's that back stabilizer on with the screws nice and flush. Okay, for this next part, we're actually going to be installing the seat. So what you need to do really quick is just orient yourself with how this little handle system works. You've got to loosen the handle, pull it out, adjust the height, just unit, and you can release the, uh, the handle there. So I'm, at this point, I'm actually, if you have some scissors, you can chop this up. Otherwise, uh, for us, it's loose enough where we can just bring it all the way out and around the handle. Again, keep that off to the side just for your convenience. Okay, so let me show you how this works really quickly while we have the seat out. You have different seat height positions, and you can see they correspond with a hole that's in the seat. Now that seat is going to go down. You're going to line up that line with your proper height. Okay, now if we look inside of the seat tube here, you can actually see that there's a little bolt that pokes out, and that is what is going to align into the hole on the seat post. 
for the specific height that you want. What we need to do is we need to rotate this counterclockwise, this little handle here until it gets loose, and then it actually will allow us to pull that bolt right out of the seat post so we can drop the seat down in. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here's our seat and seat post. Again, the easiest way to remember how this goes is the seat is gonna face, the little pointy end is gonna face out towards your handlebars. So I'm going to actually slide this down in, and again, what we'll have to do is we'll have to open up that little bolt that allows this to slide down in. It's actually a fairly snug fit, so you have to give it a little bit of pressure. And let's go down about halfway there, and then I'm gonna release this, and it's actually gonna go right into a specific hole. I actually have it lined up correctly on this side. I'll show you that here in a sec. And we can actually close up this bracket and get nice and tight, and that's gonna keep our seat exactly where it needs to be. Okay, again, the best way to make sure this is oriented correctly with the hole and the bolt is to just make sure that line where you want it is right above the seat uh, opening right there. One of the other things that's nice about this design is even though this is nice and tight, you can actually pull the handle out. It will not remove that bolt. It's simply loosening the top assembly here. We can point it down and that way it's free from hitting maybe our uh, legs as we're pedaling. Just make sure that's in the down position to keep it nice and easy. Okay, the next step in our process is going to require us to get that other brown box out. There's a whole bunch of different parts in here, including uh, your little hand weights, your pedals, and what we are looking for is our weight rests. Now we got a right and a left version, and these are actually going to mount up here on the seat. You can see the little holes that are right here. There's mirrored on the other side as well. So let's get these mounted. Okay, the other thing we are going to need are these four screws, top right-hand corner of your little packet. They're labeled 95. We're gonna use these to attach uh, those weight rests. Okay, once you have your four screws out, lastly, you're going to need the smallest little Allen key that's in that packet. Okay, so here is our right and left weight rests. You can see that they're actually nicely labeled for us. Best way to remember this is to actually have the sticker flattened up against your seat. So again, what I'm going to do with the left version now, and there's a little, there's three holes. There's a, a one in the middle and two on the far sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this middle hole and line it up with this little bump that's actually right next to our screw holes. And once those, that is in place, the other two line up. You can see where you need to thread your screws in right on that side. Again, this is going to be mirrored on the other right-hand side. I'm going to do the exact same thing. And we're going to end up looking exactly like this, where it's angled downward toward the front of the bike with these brackets, again, facing right up flush against that seat. Let me go ahead and put those screws in. And all I'm going to do is just put these in kind of by hand first on either side, and then we'll get out our little Allen key and we'll get them nice and tight. Okay, this helps to actually use this little ball joint in on the Allen key. You get a little more length to be able to kind of move that screw directly into place and then use this top portion once it's flush to get a little bit extra torque and make sure it's nice and tight. And we can repeat on the other side as well. Okay, we've mirrored that same process on the right-hand side. And this is what everything looks like nice and installed. Again, remember, it's going to be in that downward facing direction where the weights are going to rest. Okay, the next pieces to attach are going to be our pedals. Those are found in that same long brown box. Let me pull those out. And they're actually going to be labeled very specifically. So let me unwrap this and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here are our pedals. Again, the nice thing about this specific exercise bike is it's a very standard bike pedal thread. So you can actually use your own clip-in pedals or clipless pedals, however you want to call them, SBD pedals, maybe from your road bike, and attach those to the exercise bike if you prefer something different. Otherwise, this is kind of that cage style, again, that you can use with this little strap that you tighten down. They're really nice for, again, these uh, indoor workouts. Now, again, this part takes a little bit of focus because you really need to make sure you're using the correct pedal. You can see they're labeled on both the outside as well as on the top of the threading. That's obviously the left pedal and that's the right. Make sure you're using the correct pedal. You want to thread it on correctly or you're gonna install your pedal upside down. So now that we know this is the left one, let's come over here and take a look at our little disclaimer that's on top of the crank set. 
Now, basically this is giving us the correct direction to thread in the pedal. We're gonna use that little wrench to make sure it's tight that I showed you earlier. And all we're gonna do is just slip this little disclaimer off. You can actually leave it right there on the floor. Again, we're gonna be threading in the pedal counterclockwise. This is a little bit awkward for those that haven't worked on bikes because it's different on either side based off of the crank arm that you're working. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing threaded on. All right, so we're gonna take our left pedal again. Again, make sure your cup uh, for your foot is facing forward. And we're gonna push this right up against our crank arm. And again, the easiest way is to just turn this entire pedal counterclockwise until the threads are in. We're gonna go ahead and just finger tighten that all the way in until our little tightening mechanism hits the crank arm at the very end. Then we're gonna take the smaller end of our little wrench here. And again, that same direction going counterclockwise, we're just gonna give it a quick tug there. Make sure it's nice and snug. And that is it. Okay, let's go ahead and get that right pedal on the exact same way. Okay, now remember as we're getting this right pedal on, we're gonna be going the opposite way. So the right pedal is going to go clockwise to the right. Okay, the next step is to actually get this handlebar assembly in place. Again, it's gonna be facing forward like this. The piece we are gonna be focused on right now is this little electronics connection. This whole assembly has a little, uh, basically it's kind of that expandable wire assembly there that goes up into the main handlebar area and allows this to kind of stretch based off of your height. But this needs to connect down through this assembly piece on the main body. Now, again, this is short, and so unfortunately, feeding it directly through is not going to allow us to reach up and grab it from the bottom. So this is kind of interesting. What they've included is this little plastic piece. You'll find it wrapped around your stopper button. This is what they have you use to pull that electronic directly through the, uh, the body there. And so what you're going to do is you're just going to wrap this plastic piece around that lower electronic area. You're going to feed this down in. And then we're gonna come over here to the bottom where it actually comes out and we can just pull on it and allow this to kind of seat down in there. And you're gonna see it pull right out the bottom here. And that is what we're gonna grab. And then we can actually at this point unthread the plastic piece, put it off to the side here. And we're actually gonna stick it directly into this other plastic housing and connect up those wires just like that. And then obviously at this point we can take off this plastic little wiring thing and we can just discard that. Okay, now that we have this kind of resting in the housing area right here on the main body, this is going to work exactly like the seat where we're going to actually move this counterclockwise until it's loose. And we're going to pull it all the way out. And again, that's going to allow us to just move the handlebars up and down. And I'm going to line it up with the white measurements on this side. I'll give you a peek at that here in a sec. Once I have it lined up, I, I can actually push this in and screw it back down. At this point, it's also a good idea to grab that little green tag and you can discard that as well. Once this is tightened, you can actually pull it out, make sure that knob is faced down, release it back in. Here's a quick peek at the other side so you can see again, all you need to do is really align it with one of these white lines based off of your preferred height. Once it's lined up directly above that little opening, that's what will allow that bolt over here to slide directly in. Okay, so the next process is actually to get the zip tie nice and tight to clamp these wires kind of in and keep them from getting pinched by the cover. Again, our zip tie actually broke, so I'm gonna be replacing this with something else, or I may just actually see if this cover can strap on okay without pinching the wires. Uh, either way, make sure the zip tie is nice and tight for you around the wires if it's good to go. Okay, the next piece you're gonna need is the wire cover. This is in another one of those little blue bags. And then we're actually gonna be using this little screw up top here. You can see it's 87 is the part number. This guy right here, we're gonna take that out and actually put it into the little screw slot right there and cover up that wire assembly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to align these two little tabs around the back here with the holes that are in the frame. And then also you're gonna make sure this little half moon shape is towards the top. So we're gonna actually snap those into place. You'll hear a little click and it should slide right up onto the bike frame. That's how we know that the screw is gonna go directly into that little hole that it needs to catch onto. So I'm just gonna put that into the little pocket here. I'm gonna get my Phillips head 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it right into that frame. Okay, next we're going to need our display arm. It's this large metal piece, as well as the two fasteners, bolts, and uh, inserts that are right here in the middle. This is the bolt set number 70. Okay, this next step was kind of interesting. We actually have to get this wire assembly out of the main head unit. Now again, this is normally attached with a rubber band right here, but ours was wedged way back inside this tube. I had to use a pair of needle nose pliers to get back in, grab this wiring assembly, and actually gently pull it out. Be very careful if you have to do this. You don't wanna yank hard on this wiring assembly and break things. Once it's on the edge though, we can kind of keep it in this general area and we're gonna use that arm now to attach it to the wire assembly that goes up into the monitor. So this is how the wiring harness should have looked for us on the main unit right here. Again, you see how it's kind of tied off right next to this uh, side hole with the rubber band. Unfortunately, ours had uh, again been pulled way back down into the assembly on this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this rubber band, again, making sure the wiring assembly doesn't fall back down in here and then connect the two pieces. Let's go ahead and take the rubber band off of that end and now we have access to be able to connect it to that internal wiring assembly in the head unit. Again, this whole thing is gonna slip on just like this. So again, I'm gonna make sure I have enough room with my wiring assembly that's from the main unit here, and I'm just gonna connect it up to the wiring harness here that's on the monitor assembly. Okay, once we have the wire assembly connected, we're going to need to use this end wire pole that's attached to the little hole that's up here, again, on the monitor assembly. We are gonna need to pull on that and get this wiring harness as far into this piece of metal as we can. And what that's gonna do is it, it's actually gonna unblock these holes once we slide the monitoring unit right onto that part of the assembly. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna slide that on, again, keeping this wire taunt. We're gonna line up those specific holes. Once we have the holes aligned, we're going to use our little uh, nut and bolt assembly that I showed you. And we're just going to actually push this directly through. And you, again, you may feel a little bit of the wire underneath there. Again, just try to get it as flush as possible. I'm going to take my other little bolt system here and I'm going to stick it through. And then I'm going to take my screw portion of that and I'm going to stick it in on the other side of this other hole. And then these two actually will connect you know, fill the, the assembly kind of catch, and then the screw portion is gonna lock into place. Okay, so once you have the bolt and screw connected and initially threaded in just kind of finger tight, you're actually gonna to need to use your two Allen keys now that you have, again, for the large ones that we used for the support stands. And one end of the key is gonna go in one end, and the other is gonna go into the other. And this is how you're gonna get a little more leverage to kind of twerk these down and get them tight. Again, you have to hold one side steady while you turn the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down, then we'll get to the next step. Okay, so there we go. There are those uh, screws and the bolts there that are on nice and flush and tight. We had to manipulate this arm just a little bit. We had to actually have to take it here and kind of move it back and forth until we got those two uh, pieces to connect inside the tube. Again, you've got a wire assembly that runs down through the length of this, so don't pinch off that wire assembly. Make sure you manipulate a little bit in order to get those two to connect. Okay, inside the last blue bag, you're gonna find your little display plate, as well as inside that last little brown box, we're gonna have our main display. These are the next two pieces that you're gonna to need to work with. Okay, so we're gonna take the display plate, and I'm actually gonna flip it over on its back. And then we're gonna take our main display unit, and it's actually just gonna slide in from the back through this slot. What you're gonna make sure is that you line up these screw holes with the bottom mount mounting plate in the right configuration here. Again, you want the larger portion of the mounting plate to be on the top like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our little screws here. This is part number 81. And we're gonna put those four screws down into these slots here. Okay, and that's on there nice and securely. Okay, we're looking again at the monitor mounting uh, plate assembly that comes up and out of here. 
And again, that wire is attached to the other end of that wiring assembly. This is the last bit of assembly that you need to connect. So ours was kind of wedged down in here and I had to actually use my needle nose pliers again to kind of reach in, twist it a little bit and then pull it out. Again, be very careful with this. You don't wanna break it off any of the tabs. So once we have this up and kind of out of the assembly where we connect the other piece, I can then hold this, take off that little wiring and we'll discard that. And then we can actually connect our little monitoring plate to this. All right, so again, just kind of precariously balancing this plate on the armrests here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this, make sure I lined it up correctly with the correct wiring assembly there. Snap that into place. And then we can feed that back down into the housing of that arm. All right, once we've gotten that, we're ready to actually mount this plate onto the top here. And again, this is gonna kind of slide a little bit freely. So you may need uh, somebody to kind of hold this while we grab our other screws. Okay, so next we're gonna take our tablet holder and we're just gonna stick these down into the holes that are on the main mount here. Again, make sure this little moon shape is facing kind of in that upward direction there. Okay, lastly, we're gonna grab our four last screws here. Okay, with the assembly in place now, we're gonna take our screws and we're gonna connect the metal piece to the plastic piece. There's four holes that are right here, mirrored on the opposite side again of the other two. And we're just gonna stick that up into the plate and we're gonna tighten this down. Same process with the other three holes. Okay, on the back of the monitor plate is where the battery compartment is. And there's a little tab up here. I'm just gonna flick that down, pull it out. And this is where we're gonna stick our three AA batteries. So I'll stick those guys in there and then we'll close up that housing. Okay, as soon as you put the batteries in, the display will light up. You'll hear it kind of go through a little wind up phase and then you should get this zeroed out display. Okay, the final thing to do is to take out the weights, the last thing remaining in that long box and we can just set them down here in our weight holders. And there you have it, friends. This is a fully assembled Proform indoor cycling workout machine. We are ready to give it a go now. Hey, if this has helped, would you guys please hit that thumbs up button? It lets us know we are making helpful videos. And stay tuned, you might wanna subscribe because we're gonna make a bunch more tutorial videos as well as a review video on how this works, how it compares to like a Peloton and what you kind of workout you can expect from it. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and we'll see you again soon.